All right, first off, happy Games for Change Day. What, what's everybody doing to celebrate, right? All right, I know it's been a long day, but one of the ways they get you to stick around and listen is after all of this awards, after you hear me speak, there's going to be drinks upstairs. So stick around, find out who wins for this Game for Change awards and stick around, network. You'll also be able to see all of the finalists uh, nominated for these awards. As Susanna said, and actually before I even intro myself, uh, we should give Susanna a big round of applause for everything that she's been doing, right? I know it's hard work. You see everybody running around. We also heard from all of the founders uh, for Games for Change on this 15th year. Uh, in addition, uh, give another round of applause to Kate for, for her big keynote there. Yeah, I, talk, <laughs> I, I got to talk to uh, Kate earlier. She was talking about uh, going to Saudi Arabia and, and Iran. And I was thinking, my God, she made me feel like a homebody. Here I thought I was traveling around, and then I talked to her. It's very inspiring. But I think that's why, we he why we're here. But before I start, let me just explain why I'm here. I know why you're here, but why am I here? Uh, I'm David Ryan Polgar. I do a few things. I have a unique kind of background and experience as a tech ethicist. And as a tech ethicist, I explore the impact of social media and technology from an ethical, legal, and emotional perspective. And that's what attracted me to Games for Change, um, is the idea that, like social media, games can be used for wasting time or making the world a better place. And, and I think all of you, and myself included, uh, want to be part of the latter. Uh, in addition, I'm part of Funniest Tech. Uh, we are a podcast and live show here in New York. Uh, I team up with a UCB comedian. We tackle the thorniest issues in technology. And I think now is a time where there's a lot of thorny issues. So the Game for Change uh, Awards, each year, we come here to celebrate the year's best games for impact and learning. This year, Games for Change uh, had about 150 game submissions, which spanned a huge variety of platforms. It ranged from mobile to consoles to live action and five different VR headsets. This process, of course, was not easy. A lot of positive good submissions over three months, and with the help of 45 experts from the gaming, media, education, philanthropy, and technology sectors, Games for Change has whittled the pool of submissions down to 13 outstanding finalists, again, who you'll be able to see upstairs. Uh, and then four finalists in each award category. Tonight, we'll be announcing these award winners uh, in each of these four following categories. We have the first one, which is going to be most innovative. We also have best gameplay, most significant impact, best learning game. But Wait, just like an infomercial, that's not all. We also have the Polygon and Games for Change People's Choice Award, which, calling it the People's Choice Award, as you can imagine, was voted on by you. Uh, we also have the Game of the Year Award. Uh, and lastly, an honorary award, the Vanguard Award, which is recognizing an outstanding individual in the impact game sectors. We'd also like to thank, because again, uh, we had some very kind and generous sponsors. We'd like to thank Dell and HP, which are supplying the technology used for the awards showcase that you see upstairs. And presenting tonight's awards are a number of esteemed members of the Games for Change community. So without further ado, is everybody ready to start the Games for Change awards? All right, I can, I can do a clap a meter if you want. I don't, know, I don't know how much you want me to ham it up, but it's getting late. I know it's been a long day. I know it's been a long day. I started out clean shaven, so I know I've been here for a bunch of hours. So without further ado, we are going to get started. I am going to bring out the first presenter, again, for the most innovative. Uh, we are bringing out Drew Davidson. Drew Davidson is the Entertainment Technology Center, comes from the Entertainment Technology Center at Carnegie Mellon. So please welcome Drew Davidson. It's not about me. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, so for the most innovative award, the most innovative award honors games that excel in creativity and aspire to bring new ideas through unique game design, technology, and our audiences. 
The finalists are embracing experimentation and breaking conventions in a manner that proves new ways for this whole sector of games. So, if you'll watch the video with me, here are the nominees for the most innovative award. Searched for control. A way to pull through. When you were in love, you left him in tears. To smother your furies. And banish your fears. Tree is an immersive multi-sensory VR project designed to personalize the issue of global warming. You begin the experience by planting a rainforest tree seed on site at the base of an installation. Inside the headset, you begin to see the world as that very same seed. The photoreal CG rainforest grows around you, powered by the Unreal Engine. Okay, and the award for the most innovative game this year goes to actually have it in there. Tree, created by New Reality Company. I do believe they're here. They're gonna come out. Ah, <laughs> there they are. Ah. Wow. That was pretty unexpected, actually. Um, there's so many people to thank. Really, everyone from my team, Milica, who runs the West Coast branch of New Reality Company. Uh, everyone who's here from New Reality in the audience. Yeah, give some love. Um, all of our sponsors who made this possible, especially uh, Epic Games, uh, who really believed in us, especially for our next project, Breathe. And we look forward to continuing uh, immersive cinematic journeys with extrasensory elements with all of you in this room. So this means a lot, especially coming from Games for Change, because that's really what we set out to do when we created Tree. Uh, so thank you, everyone. So for our next award, we're going to be giving out the top uh, award for best gameplay. That's going to be presented by Nika Noir. Uh, Nika Noir is coming from the Entertainment Software Association. So Nika, please welcome, please come to the stage. This category honors games that provide highly compelling and engaging gameplay. The game mechanics are aligned with and reinforce social issue goals and messaging, and the overall product is polished in design, functionality, and thematic execution. Here are the nominees for best gameplay. Now that there's only one of us left, I thought it was time I heard the stories. But now I'm worried the stories themselves might be the problem. It had to end one way or another. gone. My best friend has left me. Hey, Mom. You wanted to talk? And home life is a joke. David's a good man. Dad was a good man. Your mother. She's hurting, Chloe. You're not my father. 
Sometimes all I want to do is shut my eyes and tell the world to go to hell. I assume that some actions which others would find relaxing might be horribly demanding for you. I suppose that in order to get to know you better, I would need to learn what actions are good for you and which ones aren't. I'm headed in. Welcome aboard. Let you stay forever. Gather round, gather round, everyone. For your enjoyment tonight. In the field of shattering things. Odin, what was that? Meteor crawler? Pick up those pieces they need to me. External communications have been lost. And the award goes to... What Remains of Edith, created by Giant Sparrow. <laughs> Unfortunately, the game creators are unable to be here tonight, but they did send this message. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a big honor to be part of a community that is uh, exploring what games can uh, can achieve. And I want to give a big thanks to all of our players, uh, all of our publishers, and uh, especially to our gameplay programmer, Evan Rogers here, and uh, Ben Esposito, who led prototyping, uh, Chelsea Hash, the lead technical artist, who, uh, I don't know, what did you do? <laughs> Keep the machine uh, rolling around. <laughs> and, uh, and Michael, who um, came in at the end and uh, made everything work, and uh, and Holly for uh, bringing the Finch family to life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. This just <laughs> uh, yes. Thank you so much. All right. I feel like I'm getting more creative by osmosis. You know, I know when I was upstairs earlier uh, on some of the games, I, I felt a sense of awe and, and another sense of jealousy. So I, I should probably focus more on the awe, right, and limit the jealousy, but definitely uh, impressive, impressive work. So moving on, uh, we are going to give out the award for the most significant impact. Uh, and the presenter is somebody you might know, somebody you might have seen uh, throughout the day and somebody who we probably all owe a beer to. I'm going to bring out uh, the president of Games for Change, Susanna Pollock. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. I've never done this before. Okay. The most significant impact category honors games that are targeted at specific social issues with proven outcomes. Examples of impact might include raising awareness, civic learning, community building, behavior change, and more. To be considered for this category, developers are required to share outcomes that demonstrate the game's impact. Here are the nominees for the most significant impact. With a diagnosis comes an unfamiliar path full of challenges. It's time to learn the ABCs of cancer. Imagine having to study cancer, to discover metastases in your body, to be submitted in the endless exams, memorizing which organs can undergo a biopsy. To find out that after chemotherapy, the number of platelets can fall and bleeding may occur. Hey mom, you wanted to talk? And 
whole life is a joke. David's a good man. Dad was a good man. Your mother, she's hurting, Chloe. You're not my father. Sometimes all I want to do is shut my eyes and tell the world to go to hell. Sitting here in the boring room It's just another rainy Sunday afternoon I'm wasting my time, I got nothing to do Life is Strange Before the Storm Created by Deck Nine Games Hi, thanks everybody. I have a lot of, uh, of folks to thank. Um, first of all, we need to thank Don't Not Entertainment. They're an amazingly talented uh, studio and we're extremely privileged to have uh, had their foundation uh, to build our story on top of. Uh, and they really set the, the, the standard for how we approach sensitive uh, social issues in, in the game. Uh, we need to thank uh, uh, the folks at Square Enix London uh, who are always uh, extremely supportive. They love this franchise uh, so much. Uh, they gave us a lot of great advice, uh, but most of all, they trusted us. Uh, a fairly new team doing pretty new things, uh, and, they, and they really let us uh, take the tiller and drive this story where we, we wanted it to go. And then last uh, and not least, the fans. Uh, Life is Strange fans are the greatest fans in video games, uh, and it's because they're passionate. They care about these characters, they care about the games, uh, they care about uh, everything, and they'll let you know when they love something, and they'll let you know when they don't, and, uh, and we just adore them. They're incredibly creative, uh, making fan art, fan fiction. Um, oh, we're really privileged to uh, be making games for, for that audience. We'd also like to thank all of our teammates at Deck Nine. It is so amazing to go into work every day and get to work with people who care so deeply about making the best game they can make and about representing these important issues in a sensitive way and an authentic way. So thanks, y'all. Thanks, everybody. All right. I can definitely agree that life is strange, right? We have Kim Kardashian releasing people from jail. Life uh, is definitely strange. But again, uh, congrats. And, and also, like you just saw, uh, Susanna, uh, one thing you might not know about Susanna is, right, everybody knows her as a, as a mastermind, as a planner, as an advocate uh, for Games for Change. But we also had her on the show that I do, Games for Change. So she is, or sorry, uh, Funny as Text. So she is also a comedian. We did have her in an improv theater. So don't let her stature uh, fool you. She is hilarious. For our next award for the best learning game, we are going to have as presenter Mark Delora. So please welcome Mark Delora to the stage. Hey. All right, stay. So the best learning game category honors games that offer meaningful engagement around intended learning objectives with measurable outcomes. Examples of these types of games include games that address cognitive skills, social emotional learning skills, physical health, creative well-being, and more. To compete in this category, developers are required to submit documentation on the game's learning objectives, as well as assessment results. So here are the nominees for best learning game. Odboj, to přece byla vlastenecká povinnost.
Everything in the Internet Universe is made with code. It gives you the power to change our world and create anything you can imagine. Voluptuous vegetables! You actually did it! See how changing the code changes your surroundings? One of the best ways to solve these things is just to experiment and try things out. Oh my god, all those games are so good. But there can be only one winner, and that winner is Tatentat 1942. <laughs> Thank you, this is uh, uh, amazing. Uh, it's only me standing here tonight at the stage, but this award actually goes to absolutely amazing team of 25 people back in Prague and beyond, and I would like to thank every single one of them. Also, I would like to thank Charles University and the Czech Academy of Sciences for enabling this game to happen, and Czech Ministry of Culture and Technology Agency for supporting us. Finally, I would like to thank all of you who helped us, supported us, and believed in us. So, thank you. All right. Next, we have the Vanguard Award. So each year, Games for Change honors one individual who stands out as a remarkable champion of an advocate for impact and learning games. The Vanguard Award acknowledges the significant contributions this individual has made throughout their career and the impact they have as a mentor for a new generation of game creators. Giving out this award, uh, our presenter is Eric Zimmerman. Eric Zimmerman is a game designer uh, and a professor at the NYU Game Center. So please welcome to the stage, Eric Zimmerman. Hello, Games for Change. Uh, this, no, has anyone made any awards jokes yet? I don't know exactly what to do with this thing, but sort of go for the unicorn, or I don't know, sort of self-defense. Self this looks like the top of Zelda's sword, I think. Um, OK, these jokes are going over uh, <laughs> extremely well. It does look dangerous. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. All right, well, I'm, I'm here not to make dumb jokes about uh, the, these awards, but actually uh, have the great pleasure of uh, introducing the recipient of the Vanguard Award for Games for Change 2018, Katie Salen. Um, it's really my pleasure to, to introduce Katie. Um, I know her from many contexts. Uh, Katie Salen and I together wrote Rules of Play, uh, a, a book about game design, um, Katie and I were there at the beginning of the Institute of Play and helped create the organization which Katie went on to, to run and lead very successfully for many, many years. I've taught courses with Katie on game design. She and I have organized events and symposia uh, together. Um, and back in the day, when, when Katie and I first started investigating this thing called game design, you know, in, in the, misty, the misty years of the 1990s, um, no one really thought about taking game design seriously. If you said, I'm researching game design or I want to teach a class on game design, it was kind of like saying, I want to teach a class on junk food. It just didn't make sense to people. It, 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 didn't, it didn't compute. But, but Katie persisted, and that if, if you've ever uh, seen her speak or, or worked with her or known her, you, you'll know from what I say that, that, that uh, as a collaborator or designer or researcher or leader, um, Katie, is, Katie is superhuman. Um, she has a kind of energy and focus, creativity, 
um, intellectual rigor that, uh, that humbles me. Um, and, you know, sometimes I just think to myself, when does this woman ever sleep? Um, she's, she is incredibly prolific, and her work is incredibly profound and influential. Um, some people uh, uh, I, I may think Katie is, a, I don't know, some robot sent from the future here uh, to, um, to, to, um, to sort of show us our place, but uh, sometimes I think to myself, Katie must be a prototype for a new form of humanity. Um, and uh, believe me, uh, if that were the case, they would definitely replace us. Um, one thing about Katie that's always impressed me, uh, or that's made a big impression on me, is that Katie has always called herself an educator. Back when we first started working together, and I thought I was sort of too cool to be an educator, I just wanted to be a game designer, Katie always framed herself as an educator as, as well as a designer and other things, um, and, and always, always called herself that. Um, and over time, even though it wasn't my initial orientation, it's kind of sunk in. And working with Katie has sort of helped me see the importance uh, and depth of what it means to be an educator. Um, and, and not just the idea of passing on knowledge, but in fact, the idea that by, by researching something, by teaching something, that is a way of getting to know that thing quite deeply a game design or game culture, how people learn and how people think. Being a teacher, being an educator is part of being a designer. We teach our players how to play our new games, how to play and work with these languages and these spaces that, that we give over to them. And I think more deeply, being a teacher is a way that we, we ourselves learn, that we teach in order to know our subject matter and also ourselves more deeply. And it's been my privilege to, to work with Katie in so many contexts uh, where she helped me see that that, that was the case. Um, I, I know now that, that Katie is um, moving forward and continuing amazing work, uh, as she spoke about today, as a designer, a scholar, as an entrepreneur, as a teacher. Um, and uh, it, it's really my, my pleasure to present her with this award. It's hard to think of someone more deserving. And please join me in welcoming to the stage to receive her Vanguard Award, uh, Games for Change 2018, Katie Salen. Katie. Well, I didn't really prepare anything because I was not expecting to, um, but this is a very, very humbling award. Um, I watched a little bit of the panel today talking about Games for Change for 15 years, and I realized that I've never been part of something that had been around for 15 years before, um, and it was a little bit amazing and humbling. Um, I feel like I've grown up with Games for Change. Uh, it's been one of the most important communities for me, so this, uh, this award means a lot. Um, and I wanted to, I would go into a list of thanking all my collaborators over the years. Eric is one of my most important, so thank you so much. Um, but the list would go on forever. Um, I, I did want to tell a little story um, that maybe captures what I'm feeling right now. When I, the very best job I ever had was as a lifeguard when I was 16 years old. And I taught little six-year-olds how to swim. And they started the summer scared to death of the water. And by the end of the summer, they were jumping off the diving board. Um, and I had two little girls that were terrified of the water, um, Annie and Chris, uh, Christine. Um, and I started working with them at the start of the summer. And partway through the summer, I was doing a little lesson with them. And Annie was on the wall, and Christina was here next to me. Um, and Annie sneezed or something. So I turned to grab her, and I let go of Christina. And she started to drown. She was paddling, and she was drowning. She was right next to me, but she was drowning. And so I turned to her, and in that moment, I was thinking, okay, what do I say when I grab her? So I thought, well, I'm just going to take my cue from her. So I picked her up, and she came out of the water with the biggest smile on her face, and she said, Katie, Katie, did you see me? I was swimming all by myself. Um, and I always, so for me, um, one thing about Games for Change is this work, as you guys know, this work takes people believing in you to do it. And it takes people who maybe think they're doing something that nobody else thinks is possible. Um, so I just want to tell you guys that there are people believing in all of you, so keep doing the work. And I want to thank you all for believing in me. Thank you.
Okay. Our next award is the Polygon uh, People's Choice Award. Presenting that is Chelsea Stark from Polygon. So please welcome Chelsea Stark. Thank you. This year, Polygon decided to team up with Games for Change to honor every single one of the games by letting everyone out there vote to decide what was their favorite game for impact for the last year. We had more votes than we've ever, uh, than this award has ever received in the last few years that it's been presented. And we're so excited to see so much engagement. People came to the Polygon webpage to really say what they like felt was the most impactful game. So we're not gonna have a, a long clip as every game has been nominated for this award. <laughs> uh, would be a bit of a montage. Uh, so without further ado, the winner is Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice from Ninja Theory. Unfortunately, no one from Ninja Theory could be here tonight, but they did have a video for us. So we'll roll that now. Thank you so much for this Games for Change Award, especially given it's the People's Choice Award, which means a lot because it means that our game has touched and affected uh, a lot of you out there, enough to vote and for us to win. Um, the team will be thrilled, as well as our collaborators at Recovery College East um, and Professor Paul Fletcher from Cambridge University and Welcome Trust. So we're all thrilled. Thank you so much. Okay. We are actually nearing uh, the end here. So for our final award, we are giving out the Game of the Year Award. We have a special uh, presenter. Uh, presenting is the 2017 winner of the Game of the Year Award, Tracy Fullerton. Uh, she's an esteemed member of the Games for Change community and the creative genius behind Walden a Game, which again was the winner last year. So please welcome to the stage, Tracy Fullerton. <laughs> so all 13 of the 2018 finalists are considered for the uh, award's top honor, the Game of the Year Award. And this game is, um, uh, it honors the, a game that encompasses the best qualities of the, all those things a social impact game can be deep, meaningful gameplay, innovative design, um, important impact around social issues. And this year's Game of the Year Award goes to a game that explores its topical themes and characters in a way that is surprisingly rich and complex for the medium. It takes an existing universe of trouble and tragedy. This game doubles down on the emotional, character-driven play and offers players the opportunity very unusual in games, uh, to play an angry young woman, one bo who's both brittle with grief, but also tender and vulnerable, one who's rude and foul-mouthed, but also loyal and giving, one who's dealing with issues around loss and grief, exploring sexual identity, substance abuse, delinquency, and the complex time that is adolescence. It is a story of the vulnerability. Um, actually, this, this is a quote I should, I should give credit. It's a quote from one of the creators of the game. Um, they articulate that it is the story of the vulnerability of the young, the haunting power of grief, and how one person can change everything. And so without further ado, this year's Game of the Year uh, award goes to Life is Strange Before the Storm. Thank you. It's very, it's, it's a little overwhelming to get a uh, game of the year, especially after spending the day here at the conference, seeing so many of the other nominees uh, and everyone who's participating here um, trying, to, trying to make games for change. Um, I think that if you play a video game and what you take away from it is just a desire to play more video games, then that's a little unfortunate. 
And sometimes that's what, at least the mainstream games industry, that's, that's all they've aimed for. Uh, but in fact, games have the potential to turn you towards the world, to give you new eyes to see the world, to push you out into the world and give you a mission. Uh, and, and we're seeing that all around us today at, at the conference. So uh, I really want to thank and, uh, and support everybody here, all the other nominees. Uh, it's, it's a real uh, privilege and a pleasure to be um, amongst all of them today and to be honored uh, for the Game of the Year. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So who's feeling inspired? I'm feeling inspired, but uh, we have a great way to end the show before we head upstairs. Hopefully this works. We want to bring out all 13 of the finalists for the Games for Change Awards, because as mentioned earlier, you can experience all 13 of these finalists upstairs today, after this, and also tomorrow. Hopefully everybody is sticking around and uh, We'll be back here bright and early tomorrow. So if we could bring out all of our finalists. There we go. So we kind of end like SNL. <laughs> all right, maybe big round of applause. I feel like they should bow or something. <laughs> there we go. Anybody who wants to bow or curtsy? So again, as mentioned, please, after this, go upstairs, enjoy a light reception, some wine and beer, and experience all of the games from our 13 finalists standing behind me. I hope you had a great time here at the Games for Change Awards. I know I did. And again, see you upstairs, and then bright and early tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.